Um, hi, everyone. I'm Xin Yi Zhou from Syracuse University. And uh, the work I'm going to uh, share with you is assessing the intent of fake news spreaders on social media. Um, uh, so this work is completed with a joint effort with uh, Drs. Kaishu, uh, Virfuha, Fan Liu, and Riza Zafrani. So the idea started with a common observation that social media users can spread fake news unintentionally without realizing spots. Mm, like my dear grandpa, sorry grandpa. So he sometimes completely trusts and share with me the fake news for our good. Like here, yoga can cure cancer and no exit keeps the idea away. Also including myself. I just mm, recently shared the gossip about Rihanna with my friends and totally forgot about thinking its veracity until my friends told me it might not be true. Mm, as the night users, we of course don't want and deserve to be treated like some uh, bots, trolls, those malicious users and be blocked by platforms. Uh, instead, as researchers suggested here in uh, science and PNAS, education is a much, uh, much more reasonable option. Uh, and as a recent study in Nature indicates, an accuracy notch can also be effective. Mm, that is just remind you to not forget about evaluating the veracity of news before sharing it. Uh, so assessing the intent is an essential task because it helps identify who needs to be blocked or educated uh, or not. As I'll present later, this intent of news spreaders can also be developed to uh, differentiate between fake news and the truth. The problem is it still remained largely unknown like why unintentional spreading happens, uh, how to compute the intent and get the actual intent of fake news spreaders. Mm, so our work aims to uh, address all of our issues and hence conducted the first uh, mm, quantitative study on the phenomenon that people may spread fake news unintentionally. Uh, we first uh, investigate the explanation behind the phenomenon and based on which we propose a method to uh, compute intent mm, and then create the data set uh, to evaluate the method and finally empirically demonstrates value in fake news detection. Okay, now the first question is um, why users spread fake news unintentionally. Uh, in our previous work accepted to uh, ACM computing surveys, we extensively researched the psychology explaining the phenomenon. Uh, for example, here, uh, as confirmation bias indicates, one tends to trust the fake news matching his pre-existing beliefs and further spread it unintentionally. Uh, we grouped such influence from own self as internal influence. And on the other hand, uh, one's behavior can also be influenced externally by society. Uh, for example, here as, in, as, uh, as truth effect suggests, one tends to trust and unintentionally spread fake news having been um, appeared repeatedly that is widely spread on social media. So um, computing the intent behind the one sharing behavior can boil down to quantifying the uh, influence it receives internal plus external with greater influence becomes more uh, unintentional. Uh, now let's assume we have a user sharing yogurt can cure cancer. Quantifying internal influence it receives demands measuring its similarity to the uh, user's pre-existing belief, um, which we can look at the uh, news he shared previously. Assume we have those three. Uh, internal influence then can be equivalent to the uh, weighted sum of those three orange edges. Um, and for external influence, one easy way is to uh, compute how many times the news has been shared. Mm, so here, two blue edges indicate uh, yoga can cure cancer has been shared twice. So the external influence is two. Uh, however, the calculation is not this simple. 
with a bunch of problems. Mm, so the first question, so the first problem is sharing the news uh, isn't equivalent to agreeing with it. Um, in the real scenario, users can post their attitudes when sharing the news. So the post or attitude similarity should be uh, further involved in computing influence. And second, uh, even two different news may reveal the same idea. Uh, like here, uh, yogurt can cure cancer and yogurt and ginger can cure cancer. Therefore, uh, external influence can flow between different nails with the amount of their similarity. And the third uh, problem is uh, the result presented in uh, nature communications reviewed um, a user repeatedly sharing the same news is often a sign of intentional rather than unintentional spreading. Um, that's why we exclude this situation when computing internal influence. Uh, and lastly, we introduce a forgetting curve in computing influence, considering that sharing behavior, uh, let's say one day before sharing uh, yogurt can cure cancer, should have greater influence on it than the sharing behavior uh, let's say 10 years before uh, sharing yogurt can cure cancer. So following about rules, finally, we uh, propose and construct the influence graph to, to capture intent. And in this graph, the nodes are uh, posts like this about 5G. And edges refer to uh, internal or external influence. The, the weight of an edge is determined by a new similarity, post similarity, and time interval between two posts. Uh, based on the influence graph, the received influence of one sharing behavior is then equivalent to the uh, weighted sum of its incoming edges, which we call affected degree. And now with greater affected degree becomes more unintentional. And in our implementations, uh, similarity is computed with multimodalities, uh, pre-trained transformers, and the pranking. Uh, we defined the um, the forgetting curve. Sorry, yeah, yeah. We defined the forgetting curve as e to uh, one minus time interval. Uh, the value is twofold. So first, it benefits in normalization of affected degree. Uh, we proved in its upper bound in the paper as E divided by E minus one. And it also benefits the performance preserved uh, sparsification of influence graph. Uh, and welcome to check our paper for more details if you're interested. Um, now let's talk about the data. Uh, existing data sets like um, MM COVID and the recovery can tell you um, which news is fake and how it circulates on social media. But none of them provide the intent. Um, to address this issue, we first consider the most intuitive way, uh, that is manual annotation. So we ask it to experts to label the uh, intent along with their uh, confidence, justifications, and uh, time spent. Mm, before annotating the data, uh, we informed them of the definition of unintentional fake news spreaders. That is, they didn't recognize the falsehood, but could, uh, but would correct their behavior when facts are presented. And finally, uh, one nineteen post out of three hundred with gold standard labels came out, agreed by annotators with confidence. Uh, unfortunately, we have to say uh, not just computing, even labeling intent is challenging. Um, even the expert, they are not very sure about uh, their, their, their labeling. And it's time consuming because annotators, they need to uh, go through the tweet content and the user's historical data to make final decisions, uh, making it hard to be deployed for large scale data set. Mm. That's why we start to consider if there is an annotation method simulating manual annotation, but the efficiency enhanced. 
Um, to answer this question, we uh, first checked the confidence and the justifications provided by annotators. And we observed um, that confident intentional labels were often given when annotators found the user is malicious or the post claimed the news falsehood objectively, which we call correction posts. It's actually understandable because uh, for malicious users, they are barely correctable and hence intentional. Mm, for the users of those correction posts, uh, they are intentional because they have been able to recognize the news falsehood. And the uh, good thing is malicious users, including uh, human and the non-human accounts, can be identified automatically using well-received tools like a uh, potometer. Mm, just be careful the original results returned by those tools are not binary, but a score between zero and one. So a threshold value of an, uh, 0.5 is needed here. Uh, and for correction posts, we can manually label them, which is much faster and easier than annotating intent. Um, Therefore, we, uh, we developed this uh, semi-automated annotation mechanism that identifies malicious users and correctors who spread fake news as intentional fake news spreaders and the rest as unintentional. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, um, this mechanism can accurately simulate the manual annotation with a substantial agreement and high AUC score. Um, now we get the actual intent, that is uh, if fake news spreaders are intentional or unintentional. Uh, on the other hand, uh, our computed intent tells you their affected degree, that is their unintentional degree. Uh, to evaluate the method, uh, we, okay, we first look at the distribution of affected degree and we observed that uh, the affected degree of unintentional fake news spreaders is significantly greater than that of intentional ones using uh, gold standard labels or full label data. In other words, we computed and predicted fake news spreaders that are uh, actually unintentional to be more unintentional than intentional ones, which validates our uh, proposed method. And this conclusion holds stably when uh, we compare the affected degree of unintentional fake news spreaders with malicious users and characters that spread fake news separately and when reasonably changing the threshold value. Uh, we also demonstrate the master's value in fake news detection using uh, machine learning and the deep learning. So first uh, we extract the uh, uh, affected degree and over 100 uh, widely used features and classified them with uh, XGBoost. Uh, this model accurately identifies fake news with a 0.9 AUC score, even at an early stage of news propagation. Mm, and surprisingly, the importance of affected degree ranks always top five out of uh, 109 features. And we further incorporate uh, influence graph into a heterogeneous graph neural network model to nerve features of news. Uh, again, XGBoost for classification. And this model can accurately identify fake news with an uh, 86 AUC score with uh, limited training data, where influence graph can outperform its variants. All right, a short summary of our work. Uh, again, this is a, a first a quantitative study on the phenomenon that people may spread fake news unintentionally without realizing it's false. Uh, we answered why it happens, um, how to compute intent and connect the data to evaluate the computed intent and why this work is so important. Um, next, our focus will move from computing to classifying the intent by developing machine learning models. Um, that's all. Thank you for your listening, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have uh, at the end of this session or offline. So I'll Thank stop you so my sharing.
Thank you so much for that presentation. And I see you already have one question in the chat, which we will come back to. Uh, you can also uh, begin to answer a little in the chat if you like, it's up to you.